If a person is involuntarily committed under Mental Hygiene Law 939 and requests a hearing on that issue and is converted to a 927 by the hospital, can the hospital request a joint hearing on both admission types? To find out, you have to read Matter of Julie O, but it's six pages. Don't have time for that? I've got you covered. This is TLDR, Too Long Didn't Read, where I cover New York Court of Appeals cases and I try to do it in five minutes or less. But this is part of a special limited series I'm doing on cases relevant to the elder law and estate planning and also special needs community uh, of attorneys. This is the case of Matter of Julie O. The citation for this case is 2024, New York Slip Opinion 00015, published by the Appellate Division Third Department on January 4th of 2024. The issue in this case is whether uh, in the in the circumstances of an involuntary commitment uh, of a respondent of Julie O, can the court conduct a joint hearing under MHL 9.39 and 9.37, uh, 9.27? I'll explain all that in a few moments. Hopefully, it'll be clear uh, when I explain it. The background that I think is helpful to understand this case is basically that there's multiple kinds of involuntary commitments in New York law. There's 9.27 which is involuntary with two doctor certifications. And that's a, that's requires a petition. And basically the standard of a 9.27 involuntary commitment or admission is that there's mental illness for which care and treatment at a mental, at a mental hospital uh, is essential to the welfare of the patient. The judgment of that patient is so impaired uh, that they can't understand the need for such care and treatment. And as a result of the mental illness, the person poses a substantial risk uh, of th- or threat of harm to himself or others. That's a nine point twenty seven. And if you, because you have you have a requirement of a petition and two doctors certifying uh, cert- certifying the issue, the person can be held involuntarily under this commitment for up to sixty days. They can, of course, request a hearing to get out of it and have a hearing on the issue that has to be done within five days of their request. That's a 9.27 involuntary admission. But there's also a, a 9.39 involuntary admission, and that's an emergency admission. There's a, a couple of other ones too I'm not going to talk about. But a 9.39 emergency admission, basically the standard is reasonable cause to believe that the person has mental illness for which immediate observation, care, and treatment in a hospital is appropriate. The person is likely to likely to have result in serious harm to self or others either suicidal or homicidal uh, behaviors, um, something like that. So it's immediate, it's emergency. They bring you right to the hospital. There's no petition. You can be there for up to 48 hours. And if you want, they're going to have you there for more than 48 hours. They have to have uh, another doctor sign off that you have a problem, that you need this, 9.39 in emergency. And you can be held there for up to 15 days. So 9.39 is up to 15 days. 9.27 is up to 60 days. And in the 9.39, just like the 9.27, you can request a hearing on the issue and they have to be given to you within five days. Okay, that's the background. So what happened in this case? The facts are that on August 1st, August 21st of 2022, Julie O, the respondent here, was at a local racetrack and she was exhibiting, and they don't explain in specific what happened here, but she was exhibiting erratic behavior significantly in erratic behavior that such that people were calling the police about her. The police come, they take her away, they bring her to a hospital under a 9.39 emergency admission, right? So that's the one where they can hold you for 48 hours unless uh, until the doctor signs off on it, then they can hold you up to 15 days. You can make a request. It has to be on her within five days for a hearing. So she makes a request on, on August 25th for a hearing on the 9.39 issue. And the very next day, the hospital converts it and says, not only are you, you an emergency admission, but we're now converting it to a 9.27 involuntary admission uh, with two doctor certifications. She then has her hearing on September 1st, at which point the hospital's, the hospital's lawyer says, judge, she was brought in on, on a 939. She's now also in on a 927. Let's have a joint hearing. On both issues, both standards, and the judge and the Julie O objects. Her lawyer says, "No, judge, don't do that. We didn't ask for a nine point uh, nine point twenty seven admission hearing. We only asked for a nine thirty nine hearing." The judge says, "No, judicial economy. I'm going to do them both at the same time with the higher standard level." And they do it, and the judge ultimately decides that she they 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 satisfy their burden under nine thirty nine. She's held fine. Um. 
basically at that point, it, she, she winds up getting out of the hospital eventually. It's moot. But the, the appellate division takes this up as a, as an exception to the mootness doctrine. Moot being it's no longer a case that's uh, in controversy, but they, they decide to go through the issues and they say, was it appropriate for the judge to conduct a joint 939 and 927 hearing? No. No, it was not. Why? Because it's the patient's right to request the hearing, not the courts, not the hospitals. The patient has to invoke the request for a hearing under 939 or 927. And here, she didn't invoke the 927 hearing. So she was being deprived of this hearing later on because she was having it now before she asked for it. The second thing they, they, the hold, they hold is that, uh, Julie had claimed that, well, if, if I prevail at my 939 hearing, you got to let me walk out the door. And they say, no, that's not true. Because even though, even if, if she had prevailed, which she didn't, then they would have still had the, the involuntary 927 admission. So they would have had this, this other admission that would have been holding her, holding her there, not just the 939. And lastly, um, they say, if in fact she had made a request for both a 939 hearing and a 927 hearing, then it was not, it would not have been wrong at that, in that circumstance for the court to conduct a combined hearing so long as they judged each of those standards, each of those admissions under their own standard, the 939 standard and the 927 standard. So it's not a problem inherently to conduct a joint hearing, but in these circumstances, when she didn't ask for a combined hearing, she didn't ask for a 927 hearing. It was improper under those circumstances. That's the case of Matter of Julie O. Have a good day. If you like what you just saw and want to see more just like it, please hit like or subscribe to let me know. 